back to the bins. Welcome to Paper and Moose. It is Goodwill bin day. One side of their parking area is all ice, so had to park a little bit further away, but not going to stop me from digging into the plastic blue sea that are the bins. So don't want to trip on any ice. Let's get inside, let's get warm, and let's start digging. Back at the bins, the first one I looked at was filled with Christmas. These were not older, and in this video you will see a lot of the Goodwill tags. There's a pink one, there's a white one. So it seems that this trip, everything was all Goodwill leftovers. I'm guessing this was all the leftover Christmas from a certain Goodwill store, and it was just filled. Not filled with vintage though. These were cute. Again, Goodwill sticker. I wish they would have been filled with vintage Christmas because that would have been amazing. But Christmas trees, the old, um, fake ones, are the worst in the bins. They're so hard to move. This bin had all sorts. You had Christmas. This was some kind of speaker, I think. A lot of Goodwill stuff and a lot of heavy items. And we have some presidents. Good old George Washington. This is a vintage Halloween mask. Poor Ronnie Reagan. I wish he would have still been intact. And I spot, who's this? Who's this? Um, Laura? I think, no, not Laura Bush. Maybe it is. I go over it in my recap. So I grabbed some of the masks. I left the other one there. I'm not sure why. Over to the knickknack section. I always check this out. This seems to be rather new. Every time I go, there's not a lot of repeat pieces. And there's that Goodwill sticker, 99 cents. And I believe there's, yep, Goodwill sticker on the back. So it is cheaper here, but still, Goodwill leftovers are usually not a good sign. <laughs> Just a lot of plates, glassware, things that I really don't want to purchase. So I kept looking to see what we could find. Puzzle, bamboozler, bamboozle, bamboozle. More glassware. I did find these, which were fun. I think someone just placed them there. So this is vintage Halloween. It's voodoo jewelry. They are cloves of garlic, clip on earrings. I loved it because it was still in the original package. So I put that in my bag. Back to the bins. I think this was a bin filled with toys. A lot of the Beanie Babies. Again, just moving stuff to try and see what we have. Some plush can sell for a decent amount of money. It all just depends on the plush. Beanie Babies I'm not too familiar with. You know, they have to have some error or something wrong with them to make them worth reselling, I think. Helmet not needed those big eye toys which are very popular right now I don't, I'm not really a fan of them oh <laughs> that was open and everything spilled out sorry about that I found this it is a lip smacker so it is chapstick I'm a huge fan of chapstick this was probably pretty expensive in the store so into my bag it went you can never have enough chapstick in my opinion just more plush bin o plush so here you can see they are wheeling in the new bins and they ask everyone, or they don't ask, they tell everyone they need to stay away from the bins until they're all set up and they're all locked. This is for the safety of the shoppers because if one of those bins wheels over your foot, you're going to feel it. So once they have it all locked, the woman says thank you and then everyone kind of blitzes towards the bins. So these are all clothing. Clothing wise, there really wasn't that much vintage. I didn't see the vintage clothing people have their carts full like they normally do. Everyone searches for their own thing. Some people just look for a brand name. Some people look for pajamas. Some people search for dresses. I usually look for vintage or if I come across something that I, I can fit, I can wear, and that's practical. But if you want to shop just for clothing for yourself here, you definitely can but it's going to take a lot of time and patience to sift through each bin to find your size. Many people also, when they roll out, they just put piles of the clothes in their carts 
and then they look through them later and they sort through them later, which makes perfect sense actually. So I'm just looking to try and see if I can find things that are old and see there's someone's cart that is full of clothing. And to the book section, these have probably been looked over and picked over. I had a little pile that I put aside. I found a vintage Philadelphia street guide. So I put the books aside, ones that have really cute illustrations. I don't, I have no need to look up and see what they're worth because I have other ideas for them. Some of the other books, older books though, I do look them up to see, you know, if there's any profit in reselling them. Many people are just the book scanners and they only bother with books that have barcodes and they don't really deal with the older books, which is fine with me. I try to be da not dainty. I try to be somewhat careful. You know, I, I don't want to grab a book by the, the dust jacket, but you know, there's really no easy way to look through these bins. And let me tell you what, after you've been there for a few hours, your back hurts because you are bending over to get to the other side of the bin. You know, it's not, it's not an easy, an easy sifting. So you really feel it after you've been there. Back to the clothing. I always see, you know, something that's right in front of my face when I'm editing, but not when I'm there. This is a Brigantine beach tag inspector tank top. So I've got that. And then there was this really nice jacket. I was looking for the tag. It turned out to be Gap and my size. Nice shape. Washed that up today and took it home. Then I found these, which were probably my most interesting find. They are spats by a company, which I'll probably do a video on. And fortunately, I dug a little bit more and I found the other, um, the other one. So I didn't come home with just one spat. I had the pair. It was a mediocre day at the bins. It was nothing like the other trip a week or two ago. It seemed like mostly everything in the bins, not mostly, it was probably maybe 85 to 90% were items that had come directly from the Goodwill stores because you could see a plethora of the Goodwill prices. Now this Goodwill, they take the rejects or the leftovers from the Goodwill stores and put them in the bins, but they also take straight donations somewhat sort them and put them in the bin. So it's a mixture. This day just seemed to be more heavy on the Goodwill rejects, which, you know, win some, lose some. I did not find lots of vintage Christmas. I didn't find any vintage Christmas. That one bin that had the Christmas, that when I was going through and editing my video, I thought, well, that was probably all the Christmas leftovers from a certain Goodwill. That's, that's what it seemed like. I couldn't find any vintage in there. Even the clothing, the, you know, the vintage shirt group that's always there, it seemed that their carts are pretty bare too. And they didn't find any piles because a lot of times you see their carts filled with really great vintage shirts and they didn't have anything. So it was just an off day, but you will get that. I did come away with a few items, some for myself and some to hopefully resell and make some money on. So first things first, I'll show you what I did buy for myself. We have this nice jacket. It is Gap. I found that. It's, um, I think it's an extra small. So it does fit. It has the great inside liner, which actually comes off. So it's almost like a vest. You have the hoodie. It's a really nice shape. Oh, for everything that I'm showing, I paid, I think it was six, six something. So around six bucks. So the jacket was the heaviest of all the items and the majority of the cost was from the jacket. But I mean, a Gap jacket, how much of this have cost in the store? It does fit me. I think I'm going to see if it can fit my cousin because she needs a jacket, a winter jacket too. If not, then hey, you can always use a nice winter jacket. My one main winter jacket is still, I, that's from college. <laughs> Might be time for a new jacket. So yeah, I bought this, great shape. You can't beat the price. And that's why a lot of people go and shop there because it is cheaper. 
than the stores. You just really have to have the patience and the time if you are shopping for clothing for yourself because it will take you a while to go through one bin. Um, let's see. I also bought this. It is not vintage, but I liked it. It's a Brigantine, New Jersey Beach Tag Inspector. That, I think, is the ultimate retirement job. You know, you're retired. What is a better way than to spend your day at the beach just checking beach tags and reading books in between? If you're unfamiliar with beach tags here in the great state of New Jersey, we are still paying to use our beach. Um, there are only, I think, two or three free beaches in New Jersey. I could be completely wrong, but there's Wildwood, um, Atlantic City, if you want to swim there. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, and I think uh, Cape May is free as well, I think. Um, but every other beach, mostly you have to pay to go on. What are you going to do? But I like this. If this was vintage, that would have been awesome, but it's not. But still, good shirt for the gym and also for the summer. When the summer is going to come, I don't know. It's snowing out again. It's been snowy days here. Oh, I also bought this for myself. It is Lip Smacker. I believe this is Dory. These run about $5 in the store. So that was a, a good deal for me. I use uh, chapstick constantly. So this should last me some time. And it's Dory. Now, what did I get for reselling? A few items. We're going to start with the fun things. There was this mask. We have good old George Washington. This is Caesar Soft of Vinyl. This is vintage. 1997. 20 years. It does make it vintage. Even has his little bow in the back. So, this is still with the original hanger, which makes it great. I saw one on eBay that had sold, I think, for $20. So, I'm already... Talking money, I'm already in profit right there. I just have to clean this guy up. There were some other vintage masks. We have this Miss Laura Bush. I don't believe she's going for a lot of money online, so I'll probably just take her to the flea market. There was that other mask. I thought I grabbed it. I couldn't tell who it was. I don't know if it was Carter or Ford. I don't believe it was her hubby. There was the Ronald Reagan mask. That was plastic, so that was broken, which was a shame. Now, for the Caesar mask, the one that goes for the most money is Saddam Hussein. Go figure. So these will go to be resold. Another fun Halloween thing that I found was this. This was in an odd place. It was with the, uh, you know, the knickknacks. I think maybe someone just found it and put it there, but I'm so glad they did. So this is a party time voodoo jewelry set and it's little garlic cloves. They are clip on earrings. The one clove has its, it needs to be repaired, but I love this because it's in its original packaging. So it was 99 cents. You can see the top and then on the back, it was a bonus buy for 64 cents. You know, I'll, I'll buy a bunch of those at that price. It was a lot of fun. I imagine there was probably also a necklace that went with this, probably a bracelet. I just really like the advertising. That's neat. We got that. I'll save what could be my most interesting find for last. I did buy two books. Um, the soft covers are a quarter and the hard covers are 50 cents. There were a bunch of these bulletin almanacs and yearbooks from um, the Evening Bulletin in Philadelphia. A lot of them were newer from the 60s. Their covers were all broken, so someone must have donated their, you know, collection. This is from 1928. I did not look up what it is worth. I bought it because I liked the advertising inside. And it's a great source of history for the Philadelphian. You know, there's, it lists all sorts of, it has all the boroughs. the different industries in Philadelphia, you know, how many employees. <laughs> so in 1928, in neckwear, if you want to know this, uh, 1928 Philadelphia neckwear, there were 939 employees. The product value, $4,224,000. The largest number of employees for... Well, that's for the industry, never mind. 
in the saw industry, there were 1,777 employees. So fun facts. <laughs> That's fun. And then I also bought this. It is a street guide to Philly. So I guess it goes with that. Um, what year is this? I think this was the 1965. Some street guides can go for a, a decent amount of money. Again, it's a great source of historical information for when streets change and they are no longer there. Other people also like to buy them for decor. They like to buy for places from their hometown or perhaps their favorite city and decorate with that. You know, if you can picture some little other Philadelphia souvenirs all put together, it would look rather nice. So. This was 60 cents when it was new, and it was a quarter for me. Now my last find, I was so glad. I found the first one, and then I thought, oh, I'm going to spend time and look and see if I can find the matching one, and I did. So these are spats. These would cover the top of the boots, and these are made in England, especially for Abraham and Strauss of Brooklyn. So I'll let you get a look on that tag size nine, original buttons, buttons, <laughs> and they all are still there. Some of them have wear. These, in my eye, are great. These are great pieces of fashion history. And I will be doing, hopefully, my plans are to do a little um, historical look at Abraham and Strauss because they were a, a very well-known department store. Now, I looked online that kind of, how many times do people say that in a video, I wonder. Anyway, <laughs> I checked and I couldn't find a pair of spats listed. Um, there were the tags that were the credit cards or the store credit, the little metal tags from the store, which I think are really neat, but I couldn't find a pair of spats. So what is the going rate for these? I have no idea, but the historical context I think is wonderful. You know, people don't wear these today. Reenactors. They do, um, but otherwise, you know, no one. I don't, I don't know. I've never seen someone just in everyday life wearing these. Is that a new trend to bring back? We'll have to see. So I'm going to do a little bit of research on these and the company, and I'm sure you will see that video. Will probably be the next video as long as I can find enough content to put there. I'm sure that they probably had some great advertising and great history. So those were a fun find. So yeah, not too bad for around $6, I believe. It was either six to eight, I forget, because I went back again. So there'll be another video for my second trip to the Goodwill bins in that same day. I didn't want to overload. But it was fun, practical items for myself. You can never go wrong with some uh, chapstick and a new coat for less than what it would have cost in the store and less than Walmart prices for a brand name coat. So that's always, always a good thing. You know, the next trip to the bins, whenever that happens, maybe there'll be a plethora of vintage and I'll come home with bags and bags. Or it could just be like this again, where you come home with a little bit of this, a little bit of that, but you're still happy because you still found some goodies. I hope you enjoyed this trip to the bins. If you've never been to a Goodwill bin, it is quite the experience. Come prepared, bring gloves, bags, maybe some bottled water, maybe a snack, because you might be there for a while. <laughs> it can become very addicting. So thank you for watching. I hope you have a great day. If you are new and you have lasted this long into the video, thank you. Be sure to hit that little subscribe button and the bell, and this way you will always be notified of when I go to the bins or all of my other adventures. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day. I'll see you all next time.